Well, what we find in Global Economic Prospects this year is, is something that's new. For the first time in five years, high-income countries are accelerating. They're going to be contributing to global growth in a way that they haven't for some time. That's going to be good for developing countries. It's a tailwind. It's, it means their exports are going to be stronger, and they're not going to have to do so much of the work themselves in the next couple of years. Developing countries, we also see accelerating, not to the same degree, largely because they've already recovered from the crisis and they're already doing pretty well. A little bit of a, a cloud in the outlook is uh, the taper, uh, how that might affect developing countries. Our expectations is that's going to be a relatively smooth process. Indeed, what we see in the first few weeks of uh, January is positive and encouraging news going forward. As interest rates tighten in high-income countries, we are going to see um, tighter conditions for developing countries, higher interest rates, um, and uh, lower capital flows, but not so low as to disrupt growth in developing countries. So in terms of the acceleration of growth in high-income countries, we're looking at a significant acceleration in the U.S. from about 1.8% last year to 2.8% this year. Significant part of that coming from the fact that fiscal consolidation will be a lot less present, so less of a drag from government spending in 2014 and 2013. In the euro area, a similar story, uh, although the numbers are a little bit different. Minus 0.4% last year, strengthening to 1.1% in 2014. Uh, but a big difference in terms of growth rates. Not all countries are going to have that relatively strong growth, but what we are seeing is an improvement that is pretty broadly based within the euro area. Well, it's important to recognize that what's happening in the United States is a much improved growth situation. Uh, that's good for developing countries, but at the same time, there's going to be a tightening of monetary policy. But these things happen hand in hand, so it's a tailwind coming from stronger growth in the United States and a bit of a headwind from tighter financial conditions. The analysis that we do in the report suggests that capital flows to developing countries in a smooth transition to higher interest rates in the United States are likely to decline as a percentage of developing country GDP from 4.6% in 2013 to about 4.1-4.0% in 2016. So a significant decline but something that's very manageable, particularly particularly as exports are going to be stronger throughout that period. But we do look at uh, situations where there might be a disorderly adjustment. Something like we saw in the, in the summer of last year when uh, interest rates in the U.S. jumped up by 100 basis points in a very short uh, period. If that were to reoccur, we would see potentially a significant decline for a short period of time in developing country capital flows, almost 50% decline in a short period. That could have significant impacts for growth and even for the potential to spark a crisis in one or more vulnerable developing countries.